Yeah, man, it's Worldwide Sounds Records on DJ Chase, man. You're now locked into the pregame party mix podcast on our YouTube, DJ Chase TV, on our Anchor, Spotify, and Apple, and iHeart, and everywhere else podcasts. So on our Dynasty Radio, Monday nights, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m., man, we got the lovely, the spill it. Hi, I'm going to say your name wrong. I'm going to say Kanika. Yes. Thank you. I got it right. I did it. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. I did it. I did it. What's going on with you, mama? Oh my God, everything, everything, a little bit of everything. All good right, news. all right. All that good stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Copy. So let, let I know you I know you're busy tonight. Can can I can I borrow some of your time today? Absolutely. All right, all right. Well, like I said, you on a pregame party this podcast. First of all, tell the people who you are and what you do. I know I know you do a lot, so yeah. <laughs> exactly. My name is Kanika Shane, aka the pretty hustler. And I am the CEO of Spill It Entertainment. I do my interview segments. I also do brunches and open mic events. I am also a PR and promotions manager. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Salute to that. And um, the first question of the night is, you know, your brand, your company, Spill It ENT. What, what inspired that and what inspired the name Spill It ENT, Spill It Entertainment? Um, well, I actually, Spill It ENT was a sub subsidiary to Spill in BT, and I started that blog in 2017. Um, it was supposed to be just a hip hop portion of Spill in the T, but that just so happened to just take off, and um, more people gravitated towards that. I splashed a little bit of hip hop and R and B when I was doing Spill and DT. Mm -hmm. The name Spill It Entertainment. Yeah. God, how the hell did you know? I honestly, I don't want to say it was an accident because it wasn't an accident. Yeah, it was definitely purposeful. Um, I was just brainstorming a bunch of names, mm -hmm. and that name happened to just stand out to the couple of people that I asked, which what should it be it started off to be um a cypher oh word and that cypher is was exile pretty girl first um d nasty the master and leandro the undergrounds the underground masses right there right so yeah. i was like damn if i'm gonna have a cypher i'm gonna get the best yeah to start it off um then the second one came out i had Devonte Miles, um, Dizzy Sense, Nakier. Oh gosh, I'm missing somebody. Oh, Dutch so how, so how long has Spiller been around then? Since 2017. The oh, not that long. So about yeah, it's, it's been about three years and change. Oh, okay, okay, not that long. No, not that long, and it just just. I don't know. Like, I don't know how to fight. <laughs> what? What nah, happened? But you, okay. but you know what though? You don't because at the end of the day, like a lot of people I know that definitely want to be on your platform. I, you know, and that's one of my questions for today. You know, and 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 what is your long term goal for Spiller ENT? Like, do you want it to be a blog? Do you, are you trying to like patent it after Shave Room or like one of those? Okay, got you, got you. Um, honestly, and it's funny that you mentioned that. Um, the shade room was one of the things that well, I'm trying to put it on. Do not disturb because people. I got it. I got um, you. So the shade room, the owner of the shade room, forget I completely forget her name. I want to say it's Tanika, but I don't want to say it wrong. Yeah. Um, she did an interview and it basically talked about how she started. She started on Twitter and then it just kind of blew up from there. Um, I wanted to be I wanted to be like the O network. Mm. I want everything on there. Yeah, okay. I've been dabbling or not dabbling, but starting more of the PR and promotions, um, doing more events. This year was the first time that I actually did events. Mm. Um, building my website, building my YouTube, building my Instagram, building my Facebook, because mm. I wanted to be like the hub for if you want to get on, you go and spill it. Mm, got you, got you, got you. Well, you're definitely doing that. I just want you to know that because you play, you support my records. I, I know you got the YouTube channel popping. 
And I, you know, one of one of the reasons why I want you on my platform because I get a lot of. I just posted up the numbers from this year. Like I'm doing some numbers on the podcast now, so I'm back for 2021. <laughs> and you know, and you know me, I'm always in, I'm enterprise, and I'm always doing what I do. Um, you know, do you feel like you as a as a let me see how this is basically as a trailblazer? Do you feel like you have a, a a duty to be a trailblazer as a black woman in the uh, media business? Yes, definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Um, not for nothing, not to toot my own horn, but there's not a lot of women yeah. out there that are that can say that they built something from the ground up and that's mm-hmm. yours, mm-hmm. you know. And I've seen a recent post on, I think it was Facebook, how why is it that every success that a woman has for themselves, they always um, tie it into a man. Mm. This guy put her on, so that's why he, that's why it blew up and stuff like that. Yeah. But I can honestly say that for the, I, I want to say there's about like a few, there's a few um, mm-hmm. media personalities that are women that I look up to mm. in this game. You know, one, Avery is one, V Henny is another, mm. Little Chit Chat. All, um, all my people's right there. <laughs> like, all my people's those- right there, yeah. Those are the one. Ella Jones is another one that I actually admire. Um, yeah, but I really get my like my go to as far as like marketing and things for that nature is mm-hmm. civil. Mm, okay. Okay. That's like, like yeah. If you if you want to if you want to say an, an idol, that's my idol. I got I you. That stuff and I'm like yeah. That's, that's what I gotta do. do. All right. So with that being said, you know what are some of the hurdles that you feel? Um, you know, that you face as a, as a black woman in the media business, in the media space, because I look at Spill It as more than just like a artist based like, kind of thing. I, th- I look at it more as a, as a brand, as a lifestyle brand company, content, lifestyle, lifestyle content brand company. So what are some of the hurdles that you have faced, uh, you know, up to this point? People not taking it seriously. Why do you feel like that? Um, because I'm a woman. Because in in a lot of people's eyes in, in this industry, in the indie world too, um, I kind of like popped up out of nowhere. Mm. So they're kind of like, is she serious about her craft? Or, you know, like, is this company for real? Is it legit? Yeah. Uh, it is, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I put for my 100% or at least my 50, I expect everybody else to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so as a as a female in this industry, definitely people not taking my brand seriously and myself. Mm, got you. And with that being said, do you feel like there are other females that hate on you as well, or you feel like you just like as a as a collective generalizing all like just haters in general, or just like do you ever receive hate from other females as well? You know what? <laughs> in this industry, yeah. Um, God, I don't want to say hate but it's kind of like nice, nasty. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, oh yeah. I've had women be like, I'm number two to them. And I'd be like, I'm number two. They said that to you? Wow. Wow. That's deep. You know what? Yeah, that's deep. That's deep. Yeah, because you know what? I was going to say, you know, sometimes, like, because we had this conversation on your show uh, recently, I mean, last year, and I was saying, you know, I was like, because you asked me a question, was I going to work with another female artist? And I feel like, you know, sometimes I think with me, you know, I give so much as far as like women and stuff. You know, I I, I was one of the original I put on for women. I had a women rapper under me. You know what I'm saying? But women, do you feel like you 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 maybe sometimes people don't take you serious because of that label of the mad black woman or the diva black woman? Do you feel like sometimes that that hurts you a little bit? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Especially when you're um trying to get together a collective of women mm-hmm. you know like there's always that squinting eye like is she gonna try to steal the spotlight or like is you know is she mm. gonna be a bitch but i'm like mm, <laughs> my bad <laughs> yeah, yeah no you good you good you good it, it's explicit it's, it's good but money like, you good is she gonna do that you know and yeah unfortunately for me that that's like the the thing that's it hurts because I grew up with not a lot of female friends. Mm. When's your birthday? So, oh, I'm a Scorpio, November fifth. Oh yeah, yeah, I don't have no female. My aunt's a Scorpio. Oh my, like they don't, y'all don't, I don't mess with. My aunt is always around me. Y'all don't have, y'all don't have female friends. 
No, not like I literally have five. Yeah, my aunt is always around me. So it's it's not. I don't know if it's because of the demeanor that I carry. Like I'm an alpha female. Like yeah. I don't need to run in packs. You know, yeah. I could, I could go to an event by myself, and people would be like, you know, yeah, they'd be like, oh, you by yourself. Yeah, I'm and you see myself. me, you see me. I'm always hitting you. You see me, I'm always promoting. So you see me, I'm the lone wolf. You know me. I be emailing. I be getting to the. I be getting to the business. I be getting to the money. <laughs> about, you know, and yeah. I'm not, and I'm also not a clicky person. Like I'm not like with the click. Yeah. You see, me, I work with, you know, quality. I work with different, mm. different brands because of that fact. I don't want it to be all clicked up and that sometimes ha- especially in the blogger world yeah oh my gosh so yeah, then yeah. I, it was so clicked up when I first started that I said fuck it I'm gonna do my I'm gonna make my own because you figured out how easy it was that's why you realized probably you realized how easy it was I was like shit mm-hmm. I'm just gonna make my own you know it's so hard to get with this person to get with that person it, I'm just gonna make my own yeah. and if they come they come. If they don't, they don't. You know what I mean? That's how. I am. <laughs> and what? Let me. And, and 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 you know, COVID has as as this these these this this year of COVID. I call it the year of COVID. Um, what what keeps you what what keeps you motivated to 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 keep the brand going? Like I know a lot of times people get tired of you know people want the inter the interpersonal connection the the the, the going to the events the network and the hand in hand. What keeps you motivated as far as like keeping the brand going as far as your YouTube page, um, your YouTube reviews, uh, your spill it page itself, the uh, sip of paints and things like that? What keeps you motivated? Um, so like not a lot of people know this, but in the brink of COVID, I lost my grandmother. Mm. Um, and that was like, <laughs> I literally had, I was doing my spill it in 10 segment. <laughs> the day, yeah, I had ten people set up for the week. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just looking at these interviews. So that morning, I knew I had a show to do, but yeah. I literally was like, I don't even feel like doing this show. And I kept thinking, I'm like, Yeah, nah, I have to do it now. Like, I have to do it. Yeah, I no excuses. To- yeah, no excuse. There's really no excuse. And mm. not for nothing, my grandmother was an entrepreneur herself. Mm. She owned her own event hall and she did events. She did my Sweet 16. She did my mother's wedding. She did she did a lot of things. Yeah. As among, you know, being a mother and a grandmother and being the matriarch of our family. Yeah. So I to myself, I'm like, if I'm going to be a leader and be a boss, like I have to do boss things. And a lot of times, a lot of bosses, they get up and they don't want to do the shit that they have to do. Exactly. And, and one, you know, and you know me, I've been on my own for a long time. You probably heard my name for a long, I've been doing this for a long time. And there is no, there is no support. Like you, you can't sit here and be like, yo, my, my, my significant other doesn't support me. No, you have to get up and post. Like you have to get up and yo, Kanika, yo, spill it. Can you review my record? Can you, you know what I'm saying? That's how we survive. And you know what I'm saying? Like, even if you have a, a day gig or a side gig to finance the career, you're supposed to use that to get to the pay for the stuff you need, headphones, computer, cell phone, and then cat and profit off the rest of the stuff. Not 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 hustle backwards. And, mm-hmm. and 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 as a black woman, do you feel like you like what insecurities do you have as far as being in the media? As far as you know what, not even just media, but building a brand of a media company. What insecurities do you have? I'm not a very insecure person. So, so, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sure of myself about things sometimes, but yeah. only insecurity, the recent insecurity that yeah. I would say just comes up out of nowhere is when I'm doing events. Mm. That's a new, that's, a, that's something new for me. You know, yeah. I have to get, get into that mind frame. Um, even though I haven't DJ, even though I haven't DJ an event yet, but I'm gonna hold that. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say anything. I'm, we gonna t- we gonna talk because like I got a few <laughs> things from a meeting, so like don't worry. I got I want I want to say nothing. It's okay. You put me on blast on your podcast. Bye. I want to say nothing. My my rate my race is not that bad for you. I won't I won't overcharge for the cold crush. Listen, I got you. I got right. you. 
the podcast the podcast numbers is doing good right now i already know i already know know. know. like that's my only recent insecurity um is and me right now i'm in a i'm in a transitional space yeah i'm trying to transition from where i started the group of people that i started with never forget them definitely not Um, forget them take it take listen take it from me forget them (laughs) Forget them. I've been doing this since 2005. Forget them. Okay? If they will slow you down, not, not F them. Forget them. Forget the, em. Word, the word today is forget them. Don't worry about thing. yourself. I'm really trying to just transition out from being... I did a merge with my ex-boyfriend and mm-hmm. um, transition away from that. Like... I want people, I mean, so far I've done a pretty good job since that separation of standing on as my own entity, even though I was my own before that. Yeah. But when you merge with people, sometimes those events, those um, things that you do online, they equate that to whatever you were doing with that person. So now I'm in a space where I'm trying to transition away from them. Gotcha. Whoever is there, I just forget them. I told you, forget them. Forget them. Forget them. Forget them. Forget them. <laughs> now I have to ask because I have a lot of artists that come to me and want to book interviews, and they, you know, the, the music portion of this show because I'm a DJ, so I kind of focus on the music portion. Now, one of the re- main reasons I, I wanted you on my show is because you do interviews, and I kind of like my show is geared to educating helping uh, independent artists, like basically education, like an educational class. So I I have lawyers on here, creatives, booking agents, everybody. What's the number one pet peeve that these artists do when they submit music and they inquire about an interview? This is something that I'm definitely going to talk about, not only now, but um, I'm doing a clubhouse panel. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start doing that. And it's going to turn into once things completely open up into a workshop. Um, when artists submit their music, they don't have the proper format in email, and they don't have their EPK or bio or the proper way to submit their music as far as links are concerned, or clean music for that matter. Because if I later on do events, I want my DJ that's doing the event Yo, I want you to play this track or whatever. It's not clean. I want, you know, I just give me something. Give me something. Give Listen, me something. I, I've, I've been preaching this for so long because I come from a, like serious radio and I come from like hard radio background. So I've been preaching this so, so, for so long. So I'm going to let somebody else because I feel like I'm preaching to the wall. So I'm letting you, you know. You're not the only one, brother. I'm preaching to the wall too. This is why I'm trying to, this is why I want to do this panel. And this is why I want um, to start this workshop because, you know, I got tired or can I say tired? Yeah. Um, yeah. I can say tired. Mm-hmm. I got tired of hearing from other creative artists. Yeah. Basically say, oh, this person don't want, don't want to play my music. They must not fuck with me or, you know, um, how do I submit this? And and it's just like, let me just give you the tools. Let me just write it down for you. Maybe send it in a pigeon note. I don't know what. Listen, they still they still would not do it. They still wouldn't do it. I get. Listen, since I go with this, since I've been doing a visual podcast now, I, I, I've been lucky. I've been so lucky though. But like at the man, the managers have been hitting me up, not the artists exactly. So I've been pretty good. So I've been lucky this year. Now in the past. I get dot mp3, not name of the song, not nothing. I get just dot mp3. Yeah, like, and don't just send me your mp3. Like, give me some background on the song. Who produced it? Who engineered it? Who's featured in it? Give me something. You know what I'm saying? I've yes. had, but also, you know, the other reason why I wanted to start this panel is because, you know, managers as well, new, starting new, and they don't know how to submit uh, their artist music, you know? Um, also like, do not, don't, my biggest pet peeve, now yeah. we're getting to it, my biggest pet peeve Got is, it. yo, yo, what's up, this is my song, yo, check it, in my DM, yo, this is my song, 
can you check this out for me? But first of all, I don't even talk to anybody who is of any stature with yo. Like it has to be, hey, how are you? You know, I've hit you up. Grand Rising, how are you doing? I have this going on. And it's crazy because we just talk, we just started networking. We just started like literally. I I was I was trying to be as profe- I was nervous. I was like, you know, and I, and all the stuff that I do, I I was still nervous to like approach people sometime and like look at um, like like I was like I was raised in a barnyard. I was definitely trying to like, you know, come as professional as possible to get you to play my record. You know, I know that's me. the yo the yo and the DM yo the at least a good morning. And yo, bro, but it's like, I don't blame them. I can't blame them with the bro, right? I can't blame them with the bro. Because for a very long time, people did not know that it was a all, it was a female, a black female owned company. So I definitely did. I definitely didn't. Well, as as a marketing guy that I am, you should be out there more. Because I definitely didn't know that at first. That's why I like when I first messaged you, I was like, "Uh, what's your name? Yeah, you know, I was like, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to send an email to the wrong person. I like spill it ENT. Like, uh, okay. Yes, it's all female ran based. Like the bloggers that I have, they're female. Yeah. You know, my brand manager, she's a woman as well. So mm. it's like, um, I don't blame them for that because not for nothing, the audience that I attract is yeah. predominantly male. And they're hip hop. Yeah. So the yeah. yo, bro, I don't blame you. I'll, I might even, I mean. It's very rare that I respond. I'll give you a real short response, but if you bro me, I might pass that. I'll be like, all right, maybe he don't know that you know I'm a female. I have to change. I have to let him know later on. But like, it's so many. You know what's so? It's crazy. It's so many mistakes that I see people make. And like I and last year December, I did a um a panel for music publishing, right? And I did yes, it for free. Masterclass. Yeah, I did it for free, which I, I only because of who, who asked me to do it. I did it for free because of who asked me to do it. And it's crazy to me because I actually was one of, that was one of my biggest accomplishments last year because I'm like, I don't have a college degree. You know what I'm saying? And I went to college, but I don't have, I wasn't able to finish because I couldn't afford it. Mm-hmm. And, um, but, but last year I actually went back, I did a NYU program. So I got my cert- certificate, certification in music business from NYU. Nice. And and it's funny because one girl emailed me. She was like, I learned more from you in that one hour on the Zoom than I learned an entire semester at college. And I'm right. like, why are they not teaching this stuff? Like, I'm like, but you know what, what I learned too? I, I People are giving advice, especially on YouTube. They're giving a lot of wrong advice. They never even seen a publishing check before. Like, I got all my 1099s from all the publishing companies. So I could tell you I get publishing checks. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, how how are you taking advice from somebody who's never even sold the record or never even, you know, and, and one thing before we get out of here, I want to ask you this really mm-hmm. intense question mm-hmm. for any young, young female that's out there that's inspiring to be like you. If some if a little black girl come up to you, African American girl come up to you, what advice would you give her? Don't give up. Mm. Definitely don't give up yeah. and plan and be patient. My patience when I first started this was very thin, very thin. Now nah, you can't, you got to be patient. You got to be super patient. But yes. Yeah, you got to be patient. patient. Yeah. Because if I wasn't patient, if I didn't develop that over the years, that now nah, you'd be, you go crazy. I'll go crazy and mm-hmm. I wouldn't have gotten to the point that I am now. Yeah. So it, it, it's patience. And if you can, you know, school is not a mandatory thing for me, education is a mandatory thing. Educate yourself however you feel that it'll respond or you'll resonate to it. You know, I I read a lot. um, I watch a lot of YouTube videos. I talk to a lot of my peers, people like you, you know, Mm -hmm. artists. I talk to a lot of artists um, on a day to, uh, except for, you know, other than my client, Mm -hmm. I talk to artists on a regular basis to figure out what exact because if i'm going to be promoting services to you i want to know what exactly it is you need they don't even know like you know what's crazy i just <laughs> i just finished they don't even know don't don't even because even is yo it's, it's it's bugged out because even like i just watched um i literally just watched it before we got on uh china mac that's my dude right there i did a, actually i did a show with him 
And he was talking about giving up on um. He did did an interview. He was just talking about giving up his rap career because mm -hmm. he couldn't afford it. And I was like, how you don't you know what I'm saying like I I don't know how like I mean I I just was watching an interview. I'm not like you know mm -hmm. I'm not judging them like you know what I'm saying. But I feel like with me especially like the artists they don't they don't one of the things first of all tell it tell it when's the panel when's the, the panel I know what it is but tell the people when the panel. Is. So um my panel will be called Dear Artists. And um, basically, it's going to dedicate or it's going to give artists the advice and the tools that they need to advance in their career. Not only artists, I'm hoping that other entrepreneurs and other creatives like myself will learn yeah. something from it. Mm -hmm. um, panel is going to be March 2nd. Yeah. That'll be the first. Um, then I'm going to continue with different people on the panel just to give different perspectives of this industry. Yeah. But that's one of the things that I literally had to take notes from somebody during this pandemic, mm -hmm. because during this pandemic, um, in, in more ways than one, I felt like artists were being taken advantage of. Not and really though, not really. Uh, not really. <laughs> not really. No, no, because I, I you know what I'm it is giving I mean? them too much? Giving them too much. I, the, the book, listen, you got money for weed, there's books. There's there's a book on Amazon Prime or it, it, even regular Amazon. Get an Audible. There are so many music marketing Somebody. books. There's so it, it's too much information out there, and it's books, not YouTube. There's too many books out there now, and like it's not it, like when I started, the, there was no books. There was zero. You mm -hmm. had to be rich to get those books. No, there are no, there's no excuses anymore. I don't feel bad for these artists. I don't none of that. So with that being said, who's your favorite? Oh, who who's your who's your favorite new artist right now? Ooh. I've been bumping Frank Knight a lot mm. this whole week, actually, ever since he dropped the Slim and Mickens. Yeah, I gotta um, listen to him. There are a few other artists that I need to tap into. Um, I need to tap into a little bit more, a lot more R and B, new R and B artists mm -hmm. because I miss R and B. <laughs> first love i'm not gonna lie to you that's my first love yeah. but i listen to a lot of old school things because not for nothing it's not to say that i i don't fuck with the drill mm -hmm. you know but I, I feel like that's a move that's going to come and go for a little while um because kind of like house music house music it's is too it's, it's too it's too niche that's one thing but you know what it, but at the end of the day if you won't get in it get in early and it, well, get in not early, but get into it now, and then you know, ride the wave till the wheels fall off. That's how I look at it. Pretty much, pretty much. So I do. Mm -hmm. I listen to a lot of old school. I listen to a lot of Wu Tang. I listen to a lot of Most Def. I listen to a lot of Bad Boy. DMX is like always on my playlist. Mm. I would never tell you to listen to DMX. That's crazy. Yes, DMX, <laughs> DMX is always on my playlist Word. all the time. Yes, yeah. definitely. And before we officially get out of here. This is like a two-part kind of question. Okay. Now with Spill It ENT. Now I know you. I kind of know in my mind where you're gonna might go with this question. Do you eventually want to be a black female-owned record label? Mm. I can't prepare. <laughs> I can't prepare. <laughs> yeah, I definitely did. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yes. That's your goal, right? Yes. Because, like, who's doing that? Who's doing that? Yeah. <laughs> who's doing that? And in the way that I have it set up, yeah, it could easily be that today. Okay, got you. You know, I'm I'm tapped right now. I'm so tapped into the marketing side of things. Yeah. But eventually, I want to sit back, and I want the work to do for itself. There you I go. Let me, let me tell you something, Richard. Listen, one of the best investments I've ever made was starting my own label and publishing company. And like it automatic, it just it's on autopilot. Like Johnny Floss is on autopilot. Like literally, like that was the, the best thing I've ever. Even my my artist Molly McCoy from two years ago to now, like best investment I've ever made in my life. Like literally, like I can just go on right now. Yo, Chase, you you produced this record for such and such beat five hundred dollars two hundred dollars for a beat like podcast you know what i'm saying like resume that's that's one of the easiest take it from me one of the easiest things 
And, you know, like even right now, my wife has a book and I want I'm able to even like I want to because I want to get my wife on, on your show soon, too. She yeah, has a book. Out. Like yeah, she's going to build your platform soon. I'm going to introduce y'all. And then, um, uh, you know, I, we're going to put out the audio book on my on my publishing company, too. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's trust me, it's so rewarding having your own record label. You don't understand it. Like paying somebody to write your own contract versus giving some getting a contract. It changes the conversation. Seriously. I'm telling you, like, yeah. that's one of the top things. Yeah. Um, if you see my vision board, you're actually speaking light into it. Owning my own yeah, yeah. company. Yeah. You know, like that. That's just, it's just so many things. I'd be having to write it down. And then sometimes I scratch that off because I want to go a different direction with it. But no, stick to it. Stick to it. Yeah. Realistically, the end goal is to be the female revolt. To sit back and let this shit just work for itself. Okay, so so that so that so that's the second part to the question. Are you looking for some type of deal, or you look, or you just want to stay independent? See, that's the thing. Partnership deal. Nah. I'm not opposed to it. It has to be right. Okay. I'm not gotcha. opposed to it. It has to be right. Um, because I also do write. You know, I write. I write write ups mm -hmm. on spill it but I also am a contributing writer to Fresh Mix Mag. Okay. Um, I haven't been on there yet either, but I'm not going to say anything. On on my on my site or yeah. Fresh Mix? We could, listen, let oh. me just, because I feel like I might have a meeting tomorrow. We have a few um, covers and inside stories and everything that I've already written and we haven't gotten that out yet. So, but like I said, like it has to be right. Yeah. But my number one priority, of course, is spill it. So yeah. the fact that what I love so much about my brand is that, yeah, I'm promoting Kanika, mm. but I'm also promoting spill it. Yeah. So at any moment, Kanika could be featured on Revolt. Yeah. Kanika could be featured on Joe Budden podcast. Mm. But I'm still going to have spill it. I always make sure that that's number one and that I let people know, like, yeah. I'm doing this with you, yeah, yeah. but this is my number one priority. Gotcha. So if you think that I'm not going to get nothing from doing this with you to do this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I have to watch the other. Got you. Got you. Okay. Well, you know what? We could do this all night. We could do this all day. Yeah. Word up, word up. Uh, give your social medias now. If anybody wants, uh, I'm going to start like this. If any brand, creative, and or artist, Want to get in contact with you from a music review to uh, uh, anywhere how to get in contact with what you do and all the, all the glory that you have, uh, especially with Spill It ENT. How can he reach you? What's your social media? Give all of that. Well, you can reach me and you can find me on Instagram at Spill It ENT. That's S P I double L I T E N T. No dashes, no periods, no nothing. In my bio, there's a link tree and everything's there YouTube, email. Facebook, Cash App, everything, my website, everything is there. Yes, yes, you heard it first, man. Worldwide Sounds Records own. This is DJ Chase's The Pregame Party Mix Podcast on 17 Podcast Networks, iHeart, Spotify, Anchor, Dynasty Radio, Monday nights, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m., man. And on that YouTube, DJ Chase TV, Kanika Spillett, thank you so much for coming on. This is going to be blasted out. I, you know, I, I got the Zooms popping. Yeah, so you got the video now. We good. Thank you so much to the pregame show. Thank you so much to DJ Chase. Shout out to everybody at World Sounds Records. Word. This is a vibe. I can't wait to see it come out. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm gonna have to clip up. Yeah, don't don't even click off yet, man. Everybody, peace, 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 y'all.